Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Stockport. On the day, on the page, of Andy Davidson. Someone said they wanted to see old Andy. He has now turned 22, which means we've got a better idea of his overall potential. And as you can see, it's sort of fallen somewhat. With the signings that we've made, it's not hugely uh, surprising. I still think he's a decent player, but you can certainly see that the ceiling is perhaps not quite there. I think he'll be fine, maybe as a lower... Premier League, but more likely an upper tier championship player in all honesty. Thankfully, though, we have signed, you know, David Melo, Akwebu, and of course, Pedro in there as well, who could technically play in the middle of the park too if we needed him to. More on that in a moment. Now, this episode might have a slightly different format to my normal episode. Not like noticeably different. You'll understand when we get to it because we've ran into a problem and I felt like this was the sort of time when you can do one of two things. You can complain endlessly about it or you can use a bit of introspection, look inside and try to understand why things are happening in a certain way. So, um, we've played obviously five games off camera, as you know, and I've basically been pulling my hair out through that. And I'll show you that right now, and I'll be reading you some of the notes I wrote, because I played these games like two days ago now. And... Um, it yeah, let's just jump into things, shall we? So we travelled to face Wolves at Molyneux, and would you believe it, we were the better side on the night, created a lot of opportunities, had lots of shots, and Wolves did literally nothing in the entire game other than pom, uh, pang shots from long range. And yeah, Bicer gave us the lead in this one, which was nice to see. We're controlling the game, just doing what we do. Ball comes to Odegaard, he gets towards sort of the quarter of, like, the corner of the box, basically relatively the angles are all covered has a shot molden tips it onto the post it then bounces back off the post really slowly hits molden and then rolls over the line and he just lays on the floor and lets it happen so more points dropped due to absolute i mean i was my notes for this one read as follows absolutely infuriating yet again create loads of great chances but far the better side but molden manages to come up with an og to f us i'm sick of this to give you an idea of where my head was at after just one game of this period. Next up, it was at home to the bottom club, Fulham. And as you can see, a fairly even game this one was. Um, but we shouldn't, we should be doing better. We still created chances in this one. Now, on the at the time, I was infuriated by this match because we should be doing better. But after some introspection, we were actually very lucky not to lose this 3-0. More on that in a minute. Next up after that, we had to travel to Leicester in the Premier League in what was a fairly even game in terms of shots and chances and whatnot. In fact, when you look at some of the key passes we were creating, we were actually very good uh, from a creative standpoint in this game. Rafa gave them the lead. Oscar gave them another one. I think Rafa's goal was directly from the kickoff at the start of the match. They put the ball out wide to him. He ran across and went straight through and scored. Outrageous. Oscar then scored a free kick for them after 14 minutes. Pedro got us a goal back before half time, which was nice, before Mohamed Rabas got one from a corner to finish things off. Three goals from four shots on target. And again, without Wilson, we, we're just conceding more goals now. But unfortunately, we still didn't look great going forward, although we were a lot better creatively in this game. Oh, and I forgot to mention, at one point, coming up before this Southampton game, all three goalkeepers, Wilson, Shanahan, and Molden, were all injured. Shanahan was able to play this game uh, with a sort of half fitness, although he did seem to be all right by the end of it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what we were dealing with. We then lost 2-0 at home to Southampton, a team in the relegation zone, 19th place. I mean, look at the stats from this game. They had three shots on target in the entire game, and I looked at the actual analysis of the match, and I could not even get the game to show me their third shot. It would literally only show me their goals. Um, to give you an idea, I don't know what, it must be one of those ones where the keeper just catches it and it counts as a shot. I was absolutely furious. Once again, controlled the game, created tons of chances. They had two shots on target, basically, and scored two goals. And then against Newcastle, away at St. James's Park, much, much the similar story. Completely even game. In fact, this one, we were actually better. I think we had three clear-cut opportunities in this game, and Newcastle had, I think, one or two half chances, but they scored three goals from it. And I was apoplectic with rage at suddenly being just completely useless in front of goal and inept at defending even the simplest of opportunities. So what did I do? You could either get angry, which I did, but the next day I went a bit more introspective about things and tried to analyse why that is. But all of that left us 15th in the Premier League. We are one point above the relegation zone, still have the best goal difference outside of, you know, the top, the, the lower sort of seven sides. We've still got the best goal difference down there, but still only two wins in 13. And we've now not won in, I think, nine matches? Maybe even 10 if you include the Cups, to give you an idea. And I think that some of those games, like Southampton, it was just a complete anomaly. But when you get a run like that, you can't put that down to just bad luck. There has to be something that's different that's causing that to happen. So today, we face Everton. Now, 
Yesterday, I spent some time analysing the living daylights out of every goal we've conceded, every shot we've faced, every shot and chance we've had, um, every cross that certain players have put in, the movement in certain players, their average positions, and watching everything to try and figure out what's different. Because you've got to look at it three ways. The game hasn't changed. There's been no updates, which means that the match engine is the same as it was last season, certainly for the end part where we were doing just fine. I haven't changed the tactics. They are exactly the same as they were towards the end of last season, which leaves only the third option, and that is personnel. And that is the one thing that has changed from last season. For example, Miller no longer playing regularly for us. Okoro or Zay Maria no longer playing on the right. Dyer now is our starting defensive midfielder rather than Booty or layman's towards the end of the year so those are different things that have changed and i wanted to see the comparisons between the two of those things essentially but today we face up to everton they are fifth in the league this is one of the teams i figured we were going to be rivaling this year um them and huddersfield and teams like that i thought those were our biggest rivals for position and as it happens we're in a relegation battle at the moment which i hope to pull us out of of course because i believe we have the quality to do that uh, the fact that we've not won in nine games and are still not in the relegation zone should be testament to that quite frankly but we've got a lot of work to do so this is essentially the system that we've been using throughout this entire period. I've been moving players around in and out and whatnot. Now, I wanted to put an analysis of what's gone wrong in this video, but I knew that if I did that, it would take way too long to be in this video. So what I'm going to do now, essentially, is cut away and put a separate link in the description to an unlisted video where I'm going to go through exactly what we found, why we found it, and show the working out. And then what you're going to see in a minute, if you don't watch that, is just me cutting back to the conclusions I made uh, and the changes I want to make to the tactic and why, rather than actually showing you the inner workings of how I got to that point, okay? So if you want to watch exactly how we got to that point, then obviously I've already done all this, but I want to um, show you my working out, so to speak, then do click the link in the description and watch the unlisted video where I can talk a bit more candidly for a longer period of time about it rather than having to rush through stuff, because I feel like that's important. Right then, we're back from that little 30 minutes as you want. I'm sure I edited it down a little bit, but um, yeah. So those of you that did watch that will, of course, understand why I've done the things up. Now, again, like I said, I don't think I'm right. I think that these are the observations I've made and the changes I've made based on those observations. I'm not trying to be a know-it-all or try to be right. I'm just trying to work things out for myself, you know, and I figured it might be interesting if you guys could see my workflow, flow, if that makes sense. So, Obviously, some of the personnel has changed a little bit, but I'm just going to very, very quickly run the guys of you that didn't watch that video through um, the changes we made and briefly, very, very briefly why. We might also play the game on comprehensive so I can make changes on the fly. But I feel this is important. And I'm sorry this isn't quite the sort of normal, upbeat, funny episode. I figured we'd have a more tactically in-depth episode today so we can really dig deep into this. And if this works, then hey, you know. So, changes we've made. Bicer, no longer a deep line forward, now a complete forward on attack to enable him to do a lot more with his ability, quite frankly. There are more reasons, but that's particularly the main reason. Booty will be playing as a defensive midfielder for us for now, on defend, which means he'll sit slightly deeper. We might move him back to the support, depending on how things go. Main reason for that, Charlie Dyer has a PPM, which essentially, I believe, means he's sitting too high up, and it's allowing players to get in behind our screen, and basically making the, the defensive midfielder completely superfluous. Pedro, I believe we have a problem with the chances he's creating, because he's not getting into the same positions as Liam Miller. I don't really have an answer for that right now other than not playing him. Um, so we're going to stick with it and hope that the other changes I've made enable him to be better. We also discovered that Wilson is not to a huge surprise a much better goalkeeper than the others. And one final change is the fact that Abasolo is now going to be dropping uh, to a support strike, uh, supporting winger because he never gets to the byline anyway and we want him crossing from slightly deeper to give more chances to Pedro and Baisa. So that, that's another thing. He will still be on get further forward though. And as a result of that, Seferings as well will be crossing from deep uh, in order to get himself some more chances to actually cross the ball rather than um, not doing that, basically. So those are the changes we've made. There are much more in-detailed reasons as to why, but that's essentially the conclusions we've come to today. So who are we actually going to play for today's game? So in the midfield, Puimao, I played him in the last match, but I don't know if I trust him again today. I might be willing to go with someone like David Mello. Uh, Davidson or Akwebu? That is the question. Uh, Akwebu's performed slightly better than him, so I'm probably going to go with that as well. Roussel obviously can't start because he's absolutely knackered, which means, of course, Cardo Makengo can come in. Not a bad substitute to be able to bring in. So on the bench, we're going to go with Okoro, Miller, Pusic, Borlina, Dimitrov, Davison, and Callum Gribbin. Uh, Dimitrov's nursing a knock, but that's fine. Miller, just so that we can experiment and try Pedro if he's not working, we'll try Miller on and just see if this works a bit more, you know? So let's just see how we do, I guess. Okay, so we'll put it on to comprehensive highlights because I, I want to see i'll obviously chop it down but i want to see if there's a few examples i can show you right we're at home but like earlier this season i would consider this a very very balanced game but i feel like in the position we're in right now as long as i can see positive signs here i'll be all right abasolo aquaba is going to get there straight away sips it ah oh, nearly look at the space for bednar 
Lots more opportunities. Can he dig a cross out? Goes for Pedro. He's cutting aside. He can maybe shoot. And it's a great save from Virginia. Good start. Good shot. After one minute, we already have a shot. And the possession is great. Abasolo again. Cutting through. Can he dig out a cross? He might go alone here. And he's put it in the bottom corner. And at Abasolo's fourth goal of the year. We've had a great first three minutes here against Everton. And we lead. Aqueba with the assist. I find that it looked like Abasolo instead of running quite so wide with the ball, was just running directly at the Everton defence as well, which was very, very nice. They just backed off and backed off and backed off, and he's drilled it from the edge of the area. We've just scored the type of goal that I used to hate conceding because Everton don't have a DM. Looks for, oh, bloody hell, lovely ball, Pedro. And it's a great save from Virginia. Another good chance. That's a bit more like it, lads. Thank you. The early ball, Pedro actually made the run because there was no chance to arrive late. Have a solo. Here we go again. Could pick up the ball and run. He's cutting across again. Pedro's in there. Bicer, can he slip it through for someone? He might. Abasolo's through again. Oh, and he's gone for goal. He should have squared that. We had three players over there. These are the sort of areas where I wouldn't mind a ball in behind occasionally, but I know that our um, passing is kind of what's prohibiting that. Bednar, Pedro. Can he slip it through for Bicer? He's going all the way through himself. Bicer, 2-0. Lovely stuff. Bicer holds his run beautifully. Pedro sets him up, and it's now 2-0 to Stockport County against fifth-placed Everton. Bear in mind, we've not won a match in... 10 games, I think, in all competitions. This is lovely. Pedro just runs inside again, drops it across for Bicer. Bottom corner, lovely. He did not score a single goal like that in the entirety of last season, I don't think. Wonderful. Pesetto. Right, watch Booty again. This, this here wasn't happening. Charlie Dyer would have been like here for some reason. Whereas now, getting across, covering those blocks off, and it's just, ah, oh, this is what I want to see. Saferings. Abasolo again. Cutting back across again. Saferings. He's allowing Saferings as well to overlap him occasionally because of his runs inside a bit more. Booty, more space for Mello. He's got Bednar out. What a, oh, what a goal! David Mello. It's Stockport 3, Everton 0. We've... Unbelievable stuff. Has David Mello even got good long shots? Because he's just brought out an absolute booty beauty here. Watch this. Booty provides an extra man, which gives Mello the space. But this is some next level finish. Okay, the goalkeeper there needs to be taken out the back and shot. That was appalling. Uh, but it is 3-0. Saferings as well. Mellow. Booty. Look at the space out wide for Bednar. Can we grab a fourth in the first half? Bednar. Ball across. Bicer's header. And it's on target, most importantly. Abasolo again. He's going to cut through again into the space. He's got Pedro as an overload. Can he find him? Pedro's through. He's through. And he near... Oh, those are the chances, right? That he has no excuse for missing. And I don't know why he's missing them. I, I simply don't know. I Maybe because he doesn't shoot first time? I'm not sure. Bednar. Ball in. Duffy clears. Ooh. But again, we'll have enough players back in theory to deal with the breakaway. Mellow, amazing. Well, there you have it. Half time, Stockport County 3, Everton, 5th place Everton, nil. 11 shots, 10 on target. Absolutely wonderful performance. Still 45 minutes to go. We could still mess this up now. I want to make sure that we keep our foot on the gas and don't, you know, we're only on positive. Uh, Possetto again. You see, that's what I mean. Booty's in that position to make that block time and time again. McKengo, if we could just open up that middle of the park. And Bicer's done well. Can he slip it through for someone? He might be able to score himself. Oh my goodness. Joseph Bicer. Second goal of the night for him. I can't remember the last time he scored two in one game. We're 4-0 up over Everton now. Regan Booty again here, the hero, uh, because he was prepared to pick out a slightly more advanced ball. Bicer does amazingly well here. Pretty much does this all by himself and then scores a wonderful finish from the edge of the area. It's 4-0 to Stockport County over Everton. This is my wildest dreams. Couldn't have predicted this. Right. I'm going to make a change. I'm going to get Pedro off and get Liam Miller on just because I want to see how Miller functions for the final 25 minutes of this game in this new style of play and if he still makes those runs, basically. That's the next test. Could still pick someone out, though. And he's found Miller into the channel and he's, oh, instantly into that space and nearly gets a goal. Oh, goes short for Miller. Could he pull it across for someone? He does. Davidson, what a save. And Everton have definitely improved in this second period, but not enough. Abasolo, here we go. Bicer, can he flip one across? He finds Miller. What a save from Virginia again. Ho, ho, ho. Absolutely acres to look at wide for Abasolo, who's just drifting past his players like they're not there. Bicer's in behind again. Oh, and he's finished it off. It's 5-0. Josef Bicer scores a hat-trick today. Stockport 5, Everton 0. Well, I mean, okay, I wanted this to make a difference for us. I did, but this is ridiculous. Uh, wonderful ball over the top. Bicer makes the run. Okay, he misses the first attempt, but it comes back to him fortuitously, and it's 5-0 to Stockport County over Everton. Fifth place, Everton. Abasolo out wide again. What's he got? He's coming into the space. Miller's going to make the run, I feel like. Oh, nearly. Davidson might, though. Oh, Davidson makes it six. Andy Davidson, edge of the area. It's Stockport six, Everton nil. I know I look smug right now. But that's because I didn't imagine that we'd have this level of effect just by analysing a few things for a couple of hours. Um, it's fortuitous the way it comes back to it, but what a left-footed thunderbolt from Andy Davidson. Sure, some of the goals have been from range and a little bit fortunate, but you can see the changes, what they've done. Miller, always oh, cut inside. He can get a shot away on his right foot. Oh, my Lord. Liam Miller nearly made it seven. 
So I don't believe that 6-0 is a fair result on the night. I feel like 4 0 might have been. We had a couple of long range strikes, a few little bits of luck here and there, but you can see that overall we were phenomenal today. Bicer, suddenly a new man. There's, yeah. Just take your time. If something's going wrong, analyze, and you can. I mean, you won't win 6 0 the next game. That is ridiculous, but hopefully now we can build on this. And that moves us up to 13th in the league. And it's it's moved us away from the relegation zone. But you can see now there's a real difference in the way we're playing. So hopefully we can move like move forward with that style of play and try and really get something going. And that, that's the plan anyway. So I'm sweating one out. I've got a lot of videos to record today. And I recorded that extra half an hour one because I'm a goddamn masochist. Uh, so we're going to do double live comms for the next two episodes. Um, we'll do Arsenal off camera, but we're going to come back for Huddersfield, which in theory should be a rivalry game, and Manchester United at home, because I really want to test ourselves now against United. Obviously, we won't be doing this tactic, but I'll be interested to see how Dyer does as a Volante, perhaps. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this, and I really hope that you have actually enjoyed this episode, um, because it's, it's something a little bit different. We've delved deep into the tactics more than ever before, and I really do think that doing this sometimes can be very, very fruitful six goals fruitful um so yeah drop a like if you have enjoyed this um and if you want to see more stuff like that occasionally it's difficult to know when to do that because obviously these situations don't throw themselves up that often um then subscribe to the channel for more stuff like this the other video will be unlisted it won't be in your feed i might publish it later perhaps if it, if it feels like it can be but anyway i've taken up too much of your time already see you guys soon thanks so much for watching Bye bye